Hello, kindergartners. All right, today I am going to be reading the story, The Honest Woodsman, adapted by Emilio Polson. Okay, here we go. The Honest Woodsman. Once upon a time out in the green silent woods near a rushing river that foamed and sparkled as it hurried along, there lived a good man whose work was chopping wood. One fine autumn day, he started out on his walk to the forest with his strong, sharp ax over his shoulder. He selected a large oak tree near the riverside. He swung his ax steadily as he chopped away at the trunk. The chips flew fast at every stroke. The sound of the ax ringing against the wood echoed so clearly you might have thought another wood chopper was at work not far away. By and by, the woodsman thought he would rest a while. He leaned his ax against the tree and turned to sit down, but he tripped against his ax. And before he could catch it, it slid down the bank into the river, just where the water was very deep. The poor woodsman gazed into the stream, which flowed on over his lost axe, just as merrily as before. Oh, what shall I do? The woodsman cried, my good axe. The only axe I own. So strong it was and so sharp and the handle was so smooth to my hands. Now in this river, there lived a water fairy and she heard the sad wo words of the woodsman. Rising to the surface, she spoke to him in a voice that was like the sweet, tuneful tinkle of flowing water. What's your sorrow, she said kindly. The woodsman, full of wonder at the sudden appearance of this lovely creature, told her of his trouble. Cease your sad words, said the fairy in her tinkling voice. Far, far below lays your axe. Fairy eyes may see even in the watery depths of the stream. She sank and then quickly as a wink, she rose again. With her, she brought an axe of silver. She held it before the woodsman's eyes and asked, is this the axe you lost? The woodsman knew that with so rich a treasure he could buy many axes and many other wonderful things besides but he shook his head and said no that is not my axe well then the fairy said here on the bank let this remain i shall go down and try again she sank beneath the water and then she popped back up again this time she held an axe of gold the blade the handle was all pure solid gold is this the axe you lost, she asked. Oh no, the woodsman replied, that is not my old axe. It shines more brightly than my old axe. It must be worth a great deal more than mine. Indeed, said the fairy. Then this gold axe may lie on the bank beside the silver one while I seek again for yours. The blue waters closed once again over the ferry. The woodsman looked at the gold axe and the silver axe glittering in the grass. They are beautiful, he said, and worth far more than my old axe, which is made of wood and st steel. Still, it is as good a an axe as ever chopped a tree. At this moment, the water fairy again appeared, holding another axe high in the air. The woodsman reached forward with a shout of joy. That's mine, he cried. That is surely my old, own old axe. Yes, said the fairy as she put it in his hands. This is your axe, but it is only a plain one of wood and steel. Did you not like the silver axe and the gold axe? Oh, I liked them very much, he an answered the woodsman. But the silver axe was not mine and the gold axe was not mine. I would be wrong to say that they were mine when in truth, they do not belong to me. Honest woodsman, said the fairy with a smile, truth is better than silver or gold. And so farewell, but take as a gift from me the axe of silver and the axe of gold. With that, she waved her hand and disappeared beneath the water. 
Greatly surprised, the woodsman stared at the river, but it only sparkled and rippled as usual. At last, with his heart full of thanks, the honest woodsman gathered up the three axes and hurried home to tell his wonderful adventure. All right, kindergartners, I hope you enjoyed that story. And let's end with a Yeti high five. You ready? Yeti high five. Yeti high five. All right, I hope you have the best day. Thanks for listening and I'll see you later. Goodbye.